Hey what's up folks, Internal here and the Sweative Redirect literally just happened and today I'd like to go through things I loved about the Sweative Redirect and yes I could just say everything in the direct was perfect but oh my it was so good. But for this kind of video I will not and instead point out things I love the most. Without further ado, let's get started. Starting off, this one is clearly an obvious one but of course it's Splatsville. The town is just wonderful, I mean everything is laid out perfectly and the designs for the buildings are just magnificent. The exterior for the shops is pleasant, the lobby tower looks amazing and there's even an area for the table turf battle dojo. The signs which are scattered around Splatsville makes the place look even better and makes the surroundings more suitable to describe the city of chaos. Even though many thought will get apartments, the decoration for it is rather nice as well. Overall, Splatsville is amazing and it's even prettier when in Splatfest mode. It's colourful which makes it beautiful. Splatsville is for sure one of my favourite things so far. Throughout the direct, we saw some returning faces from previous games, except I won't be talking about the returning faces from previous games today. But we also saw some brand new faces, a lot of brand new people to be exact. The workers in the headgear, clothing and shoe shops are brand new folks and their personality and appearance are just spot on. Speaking of workers, did anyone notice how cute Harmony is in the shop to customise the lockers? Her personality is great too. Going over to even more new NPCs, we cannot forget about Staff who works at the Table Turf Battle Dojo. This guy is awesome and I love their design. Also there's a new person called Recon Guide and it seems that they don't have a proper name. But they are of course the person who runs the recon area, and they seem delightful. We already knew about this one, but of course I couldn't forget about our new companion friend, Little Buddy. I covered them in the past before, but this little dude is cute. Now the last part to cover the new NPCs is of course the brand new idols known as Deep Cut. Their names are Shiver, Fry, and Big Man. I'm really happy with how they look, and yes, I'm sorry Fry, but it seems that you're Pearl's new forehead rival. Also, this is the first time we've seen three idols overall, which obviously means more teams for Splatfest. Going back to talking about how the idols look, Big Man is a manta ray as far as I know, and he's a friendly guy. I love how he looks too. I cannot forget about Shiver who is an octoling idol. I really like their appearance because it's really fitting for the area, and they are marvellous. Lastly for the trio, I need to talk about Fry and they are also a debatable character in a way. I've seen Twitter and some like them and some don't. Personally I like Fry because they are truly amusing. Fry is an inkling idol who is also nice. I like their appearance even if that means their eyes are somewhat big and so is their forehead but that really really doesn't matter. I could go on and on about the NPCs but to keep this short for now I'll just talk about the new ones. I'm sorry Squid Sisters, Sheldon, Captain Free, Cuddlefish and Off The Hook. I'll probably discuss you guys another time. Moving over to Lobby, there's a lot to discuss here because the Lobby is just huge. It has a section where you can choose what kind of battle you'd like to play, whether that's Turf War, Private Battles or Ranked. And the thing is, with Ranked, they've changed the name to Anarchy Battle and there's two types, Series and Open. In Series you can build up your rank and go against others who have a similar level of skill. You can only play this solo, meanwhile with the Open version, you can play this alone or with friends, which is cool. Oh yeah, I forgot to say that all four ranked modes for Splatoon 2 will be making a return and the modes for series and open will be different while stages remain the same. In the future, they'll be adding two modes, League Battle and X Battle. League Battle will probably be the same except it said there's a special twist to it, which is interesting. X Battle will also be a thing for competitive and top players, so I wonder how that'll go. Anyway, enough about modes, let's chit chat about other features the lobby contains and the first one I'd like to talk about is the battle replay feature. This feature was requested in the past by many fans and this feature will be so good because you'll be able to go back and review what mistakes you might have made in previous games and how you could also have done better. Oh, and you might be able to upload these replays online. There are also other options in the menu where battle replays are, like battle stats, changing your name, splash tags, and other things. I won't cover them, but battle replays stood out to me the most. Within the lobby, they also showed off the new test range, and that's a great place to practice weapons whenever you like. 
and you can also use this place to practice whilst waiting for the match to start and that's a great quality of life feature. You can also use the test range with others if you're on the same team which is great for warming up and things. I could continue going over everything I love about the lobby but to keep things short I'll cover one more thing within it and we'll move on. And that is the locker room and this place obviously has lockers which you can customise yourself and you'll be able to view other people's lockers as well. This is basically the feature of apartments that fans have been requesting and I'm glad we got this instead. It gives off character a lot more since we can display gear, weapons, stickers and other items. You'll be able to get these items from the worker Harmony at her shop called Hotlantis and that's really cool. Lockers are a great feature to the game. As someone who loves Salmon Run in Splatoon 2, obviously I couldn't forget about this mode. I mean, there's quite a bit to discuss. So let's start off with the new bosses Nintendo announced during the Direct and the first one is Slammin Lid. This boss protects Salmonids when they spawn in, but if the player goes under the disc, the boss will try and flatten them. The design of this boss is amazing and I like how it looks like a UFO. The next new boss is Big Shot. This boss launches bombs from the cannon and the bombs are powerful shockwaves. I'd assume this boss will be countered by splatting the salmonid at the shore, although I could be wrong. Big Shot is a very tall and chunky boss which suits the theme. I love how Nintendo has designed it and the cannon it uses is just nice too. During the direct we also found out the mystery behind the King Salmonid that was teased in the February direct. The King Salmonid can potentially spawn in at random occasions after wave 3 ends. This boss summons a bonus wave that you must attempt to spot it as soon as possible and surprisingly, you can use golden eggs to deal more damage to it. I'm so glad we now know what this dude does and I'm sure it's a great feature. Now, there are a lot of things I love during the direct, but this one will have to be my last one for my video. And it's about the stages. Nintendo announced there will be 12 stages at launch and 5 of them will be new ones. They are called Scorch Gorge, Eeltail Alley, Undertow Spillway, Mincemeat Metalworks and Hagglefish Market. We know about Scorch Gorge and Eeltail Alley quite a bit, so I won't be discussing them much other than saying those two stages are great, and I can't wait to play on them when the game comes out. So, Splatoon JP revealed Undertow Spillway and Mincemeat Metalworks on Twitter, but in the direct, we get to see a better view of those stages briefly. Undertow Spillway is based on being underground, but the stage is laid out well and it looks fantastic. Going over to Mincemeat Metalworks, it is a stage that's in a shipyard storage facility. It looks a bit small in my opinion, but I shouldn't be guessing that too soon. Either way, the map is wonderful. There's one more new stage in Splatoon 3 that we know of right now. It was revealed in the direct and it's called Hagglefish Market. The map has water since it seems to be on a pier or docks of some sort, and there are market stands scattered around in different areas and that is lovely. I like how it's laid out and I'm excited to play on it like other maps. Like I said earlier about there being 12 stages at launch, the other 7 are returning stages from past games. They are Museum de Alfonsino, Hammerhead Bridge, Mahi Mahi Resort, Inkblot Art Academy, Maker Mart, Sturgeon Shipyard, and Wahoo World. I do think these are all good picks and I'm glad they're coming to Splatoon 3, although it's rather questionable about Wahoo World. I and maybe a few others aren't a huge fan of that, but okay Nintendo. There's not too much that needs to be said about some of these maps like Museum, Mako, Inkblot and Wahoo. However, I'd like to talk a bit about Hammerhead Bridge, Mahi Mahi Resort and Sturgeon Shipyard. In Splatoon 3, Hammerhead Bridge looks a lot different compared to Splatoon 1's version, but that's because in Splatoon 1, the stage has said it was under construction, therefore there are no longer grates on top of the map and it makes the map look rather polished. It's a slim stage, but that's to be expected since it's a bridge. Overall, I'm happy with how it looks. Heading over to another Splatoon 1 returning map, and that is the beloved map, Mahi Mahi Resort. There's not really any major differences, except I'd like to say that there seems to be some bounce pads on that map now, which is crazy. Since that's not seen in the stage before, except one shifty station in Splatoon 2. The stage looks a tad smaller in my opinion, but maybe that's just me. Lastly, it's Sturgeon Shipyard. This stage hasn't gone through a lot of changes, it looks almost identical like Splatoon 2's but during the Splatverse view at the top of the map, 
It looks like the left side near where spawn was is missing. Maybe it's just a Splatfest thing, or the fact that we spawn in the air now, it's hard to say. I know the pit areas are wider, but I'm assuming that's just for the Splatfest, because we only saw that when the Squid Research Lab employee was talking about the new Splatfest mode after halftime. Finally, Nintendo teased two stages which will make an appearance in future updates in Splatoon 3. One that's a pyramid desert looking stage, and as far as I know, it doesn't have a name yet. And my favourite Splatoon 1 map, which is Flounder Heights. Looking at the photo, Flounder Heights looks a bit different since the top of the map has been lowered a bit, and I'm okay with that. Either way, I'm excited! I think I covered everything to do with stages, so let's call it there. I appreciate everyone for- Ah, shoot! There's one more thing I forgot, and that's related to Salmon Run. It's the big run mode, which apparently happens every few months. Salmoners invade the city, which causes them to battle you and crewmates on different multiplayer stages. In the direct, this was shown on Wahoo World, so I can't wait to see what other stages they'll invade on. Okay, for reals this time, I'm wrapping up the video here. This direct has made me even more excited about Splatoon 3 and I love everything which was shown, and I can't wait to see what happens next in the game. Oh yeah, I'll be playing the Splatfest World Premiere, and speaking of that, I am Team Rock. So you're going down, Team Paper and Scissors. Team Rock will be superior. Anyways, I hope you all have enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye!